and I really have to answer this question is which is the best smartphone to photograph the Milky Way and <laughs> Let's start the video. I just changed my phone because my LG G5 it was getting old and starting to have a little bit of problems. I am doing this video just to see the difference between my old LG G5 and the new OnePlus 6T. The objective of this video is not to teach you how to photograph the Milky Way with a smartphone. Actually, I already did that and you probably already seen it and everything is exactly the same. Exposure expo is exposure, smartphone is still a smartphone, but a really important detail. You need to make sure that your smartphone have manual control. So. In this smartphone, the OnePlus 6T, it's the Pro mode. So let me just talk about my setup over here. I have my old tripod and I have the Ulanzi U-Rig Metal that they sent me to make a review and also a wide angle lens attached on the top of it. And I actually can see it has some fog on it. I have to clean it. The Milky Way it's over there, so let's take a picture. 3200 ISO, 30 seconds of exposure, so this is doesn't have really voice control or whatever. I am forced to use a shutter speed delay and let's take our first shot. While this is uh, taking a picture, if you guys really want uh, extreme detailed of technique how to photograph the Milky Way I advise you to check out this video it's a two parts video the first one is the technical stuff how to photograph the Milky Way and why and how to edit the photo of the Milky Way the way I do it here we have the picture over here nice so this is taking two pictures the JPEG and the raw one so this is the JPEG and here we have the raw one so nice and dandy a lot of you guys told me to not use a high iso or even suggest to use just the minimal iso okay let's do that and usually i answer those comments but showing you it's better than answer the comments so 100 iso it's the minimal on this camera so let's take a picture Usually when people advise me 100 ISO or 50 ISO, they don't know how ISO works. That's why they are advising me to use that ISO. So ISO it's a, an important element of exposure. So let's say, check the picture and... Uh, where is the icon of the picture? And surprise, surprise, it's all black. Why it's all black? because the camera is not making any effort to recover the image. Let's check out the RAW. Let's just check out the other photo. There is a big difference, isn't it? Well, I guess I need to explain you why the image is black. The image is black because the camera is not making a big effort to recover the, the light that it's receiving on the sensor. And that's why lower ISO, the image will be uh, black. I have a comparison. Maybe you guys will understand better. So what I have here, it's my smartphone. It's sending a signal to the radio of my car. It's playing the music here from this artist. She's called Sara Cruz. Uh, check her out in, uh, in Spotify and in Deezer. She's a really cool artist here from the Azores. Imagine that the volume that the cell phone is sending to the radio so the cell phone it's the ambient light okay and the radio is the camera okay so if i crank up the volume of my cell phone meaning like daylight there is a lot of light so there is a lot of volume sending from the smartphone to the radio but if i crank down the audio of my cell phone as it is with the light of the stars that means we don't have enough light to get the image, we don't have enough volume to get the sound. What I am forced to do is actually crank up 
the volume of the radio. So the volume of the radio is like ISO. Yes, I have some noise, but also I have the image, but also I have the song. So the relationship between the smartphone and the radio is the same relation that we have between ambient light and, of course, the radio. A good idea is try different ISOs. You are in the, in the right place, the Milky Way is right there, you avoid the light pollution. Why not just try different ISOs? Actually, for my, for my own tasting, the minimal it's 800. So uh, usually it's cold even during the summer, so get some clothes. And as you can see, 800 ISO, it's not really cutting it. So let's add one stop of light and let's go to 1600 and let's take the picture. So my big DSLR, it's over there and it's taking a time lapse of the Milky Way. If you guys don't know, I make time lapses. So I have a playlist over here if you want to check out my time lapses. So let's just check out. We have a little bit of more detail, but honestly, let's add one more stop of light, 3200 ISO. A lot of you guys, it's always asking me do I need a wide-angle lens? And honestly, not really. It's way better, if, especially if it's a high-quality uh, lens, it's way better, but you don't really need to use it. So I'm gonna just remove it. Let's try to photograph the Milky Way without the wide-angle lens. So this is a wide-angle lens, okay? Not a fisheye lens. There is a big difference between both of them. Uh, the big problem of photographing this with, without a wide-angle lens is that you have the risk of having star trails during 30 seconds of exposure. And let's check it out. And as you can see, actually, uh, okay, that's not bad. I am pretty damn surprised about this. I was expecting having some star trails, but I didn't. I didn't. Pretty damn nice. You have a little bit of zoom also, but it's really damn good. Now, if your camera is getting a little bit of star trailing, the best thing that you can do is reduce the shutter speed something like 15 seconds or 20 seconds, you have to test it out yourself. I'm loving a lot the results of this camera. What I don't really like, it's the plants over there. They have a little bit of light. So, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shut down that light over there. Okay, and let's shut it down. Let's go back to the camera and make this picture again. A lot of you guys also ask me if we can see the Milky Way with our own eyes. Yes, you can. You have an idea of the galaxy crossing the sky. Yes, you actually can see it. So, just a small detail, you can see it as in the pictures. So. The, the, the camera is cheating, it's getting 30 seconds of light to get the image. So your eyes, it's uh, in real time recovering the light, but actually you can uh, see it. Okay, uh, honestly, I am pretty damn impressed that it doesn't have any star trails and it has a really beautiful image. I'm really happy with the results with this smartphone. Let's turn the, on the light so you guys can see me. And we are back. So now that I just turned on the light, I tried to watch the Milky Way 
and I can't see it, okay? Because I am using the light. So shut down the lights and enjoy the beautiful sky. So I have to make a remark about light pollution and this video over here from National Geographic is a really, really cool example of how much light pollution you're gonna have on your image. And uh, if I press play, you can see it's a time-lapse video of, um, of the Milky Way with different uh, light pollution levels. So if you are wondering which kind of pollution you're gonna find in the area that you're gonna photograph, uh, this gives you a really clear and really cool idea of how much light pollution will affect your image. So a lot of you ask me which smartphone you should buy to get good pictures. Now, I choose this OnePlus 60 not for the camera itself, but honestly for its beautiful screen and processor. If I really want a good picture, I would buy a camera. If you are taking seriously photography, you need to buy a camera. Honestly, the smartphones, this is almost 600 euros. By 400 euros, I have a camera way, way, way better than this, okay? I guarantee you that. Okay, if you don't want to take seriously photography, go buy a smartphone that has manual control. It's almost all of them, it's almost the same, okay? Not really the Samsung's because you are limited to 10 seconds. That's a bit of a problem. Also, another smartphones that have problems is the iPhones. If you want to try this in the iPhone... <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. And uh, I would like you guys to comment down below which brand of smartphones that you have and what is the shutter speed limit on your smartphones. If someone wants to buy a smartphone that can do this, uh, this type of photography, it's a good idea. Just check out the comments on this video. If you guys can comment there and help everyone would be great. So OnePlus can do 30 seconds of exposure. The LG can do 30 seconds of exposure, but that phone is the only ones that I did test that. Well, everyone, I'm really happy to do this video again. This time I am actually alone. My friend Ruben is not with me because I am in the Azores uh, with my family. Actually, not right now because I am in the middle of no freaking where uh, to make uh, the, the photo of this uh, Milky Way. Drop a comment if you have any questions. Drop a like if you learned something and, subs and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. I am Miguel. Until next time, see ya.